it was nine and a half and a half. Okay. All right. Three books. Maybe about ten minutes. Okay. All right. Today. Um, we're going to do a few notes here. Um, hopefully, that, uh, hopefully I'll give you enough time where you can actually work on your homework. There's a couple problems I want to discuss from yesterday, and it ties in perfectly with what we're doing today. So, that's right. have your notes down. People, you want to turn that desk around, that'd be great. Thanks. Okay. All right. Uh, let's go through a couple notes here. Um, pretty straightforward. Okay. Uh, today we're talking about functions and the graphs. The big thing I want to discuss today. Let's do a quick review of the homework that I signed yesterday in case you're gone. Because I know some people gone yesterday, so I want to do a quick review. What you need to do for your homework, I'm going to do some shortcuts, all that good stuff. Uh, make sure that you're kind of reading the directions and whatnot so you kind of know what you're doing. Um, hopefully this makes sense. The new stuff I want to cover today, I want to cover increasing functions and decreasing functions. Increasing versus decreasing versus constant. So versus a constant function. Um, we're going to talk about intervals again today, which is a part of it, actually your homework that you had today. So we'll talk about intervals and the notation for that. Okay, so we'll talk about intervals or notation. Uh, and then the last thing I really wanted to discuss today is, once we're through all that, that's quite a bit of stuff. Um, I want to talk about, if we can get to it, um, it's called a differential quotient. Differential now, I might just intro one today to talk about what it is. That what this topic is. In fact, I'm going to put a star next to it. it. Is the first like major concept for calculus that you need to have covered. That you need to know. Like um, all this stuff we've been up to, up to this point. Yeah, it's kind of light and kind of easy. Kind of makes us now for one, out for two together, uh, which is a part of pre-calc. I mean, a lot of this stuff is. It's why it's in your book. Um, but this thing, this differential quotient, is a major chunk in, in calculus, like a major piece. In fact, they spend an entire semester in Calc 1, like the entire year, teaching differential quotients. And I'm going to try to show you how to do it in about five minutes. Okay. It's not hard if you see it for the first time. You're like, oh, that's all you have to do? Yeah, that's all we do. Okay? And they try to teach you over an entire semester. Okay? Um, so that's kind of what we're doing today, but first let's talk about the homework. Now the homework was pretty straightforward. A lot of the questions in your homework were, is this problem a function or not? It was basically a yes-no type of question. The, the weird thing about this, that you also had to read the instructions and give me the domain and range. Be careful, so most questions did ask for domain and range. So that's where you have to give me the, the, the actual numbers. So, I, I think for the first two, they give you coordinates, okay? They give you something like this. A bunch of coordinates, it's a yes, no type of question, 1 comma 3, 4 comma 3, 5 comma 2, 7 comma negative 20. I don't really care what the numbers are. That is a function. The reason why, every x has a number coming out for a y. I don't care if the number's repeated in the back. Every x has a number. What would make this not a function is if they did this. Now I have a problem. Wrong. That's wrong because the number 7 has two different answers. I don't care about up here. Like, a lot of people are always like, well, this repeat the 3. I don't care about that. Every x has an answer. Except for when you get to here. This x had two different answers had a negative 20 versus a 10. That's a problem. Not a make sense? I can do that. Domain numbers. If you're doing domain, it's all the x numbers. 1, 4, 5, 7. All the range numbers. 2, 3, 10. Uh, if there's a negative 20, you put that in the front. Okay, negative 20. You write out those, all the y numbers are the range, all the x numbers are domains. Make sense? OK, 
Okay, that's the first couple. I think those are easy. Most people can do those without even having to think about it. You just have to know, is it yes or no? That problem that I have on the board right now is it So no. if it's no, you don't have to write them in? I don't think you do. I, you I do. put them anyway. You I do. just put them anyway, just because they're asked for many reasons. They're still free. Free. It's just not a function. Do you? So, I don't, I don't think it has a stipulation that says, it like, says it's a function. It says state the domain range of the relation. So I yeah. feel like that means either way. You you're probably either way have to state it. it. So you're going to want to do Okay. Now, the next one. I think it was 12, 13, 14. It was the next one. 12 or 24. Okay, yeah. They give you a random equation like this. Something like this. And they ask, is it a function or not? That's it. It's a yes, no question. That's all they ask. Well, that's all they give you, right? Here's what I recommend. Just graph it. Not on graph paper. Type it in Google. Look at what it looks like. So what I would do, and maybe even have the Desmos app. Maybe you can download that in the App Store. Desmos, because I think every Chromebook can download it. It's just a graphing program. You have to type this function just like that, where you have to type in y equals and whatever. So if it's not y by itself, like this, maybe that's your problem. You have to move the x squared over. Uh, let's see, what is this? 15 minus x squared. And then you have to get the y by itself. So this is y plus or minus square root of 15 minus x squared. Now, if you can't do the plus or minus, do one positive and then draw the next line down the negative. I think in Google, you can just type it in, it'll actually graph it. That's why I just say Google it. And when you look at the graph, does it pass the vertical line test? If you do the top one, here's the top graph, by the way. It's like this. That passes the vertical line test. When you draw an imaginary vertical line, it only hits one number at a time. You're totally fine. And yes, this is angled, and that's angled. When you do the bottom one, that's a circle. It's a circle on a graph. That fails the vertical line test. Because when you actually graph this, how are you going to graph it? Maybe you just type that in, or maybe you type in both these individually. Um, when you type it, it actually draws it. It's both angular and square, so I know that. No, but anyways, when you draw a vertical line, it fails the vertical line test. It hits twice. Every x had two different answers. So definitely not the function. Okay, if you Google it, it will show you the picture. And you just draw the imaginary line in your head. It's a yes, no question. That's all I have to tell you. So 12 through 26 should be yes, no. Okay? Make sense? What you're doing. Some people, like, they're thinking way too hard on these fronts. The next one, they have you doing some substitution, plug some stuff into functions. Whatever they tell you, f of x is a x squared plus 3x. And maybe they tell you in problem number, I don't know, 30 or whatever it is. Maybe they say find f of 5. Well, that means you have to plug 5 in here. 5 squared plus 3 times 5. So that's 25 plus 8, which is 33. 33. Yep. Okay, that's how you do those problems. They're just having you substitute. I don't even care if there's variables in there. Okay. Oh, that's 15. What else? Oh, uh, what is that? 40? Oh, my gosh. All right, moving on. Um, so that's the next one. All right, so next. Let's go to the next ones. Um, the next ones, they give you a picture of a graph. And then they ask me a series of questions about it, like what's the domain, what's the range, what's the uh, what's f of x of 2, you know, that type of thing. So whatever the graph is, in fact, let me put up a graph up here just so you can see this. So this would be like the last few. They give you a graph like such, and they have some picture on it like such. Like that. Okay, and they ask, you know, maybe this question number 20 or 30 or whatever. They go, what is f of negative 8? Well, f of negative 8, that means I have to find negative 8 on the x-axis. So this is 12, 10, or 12, 11, 10, 12, 9, 10. 8. So this is negative 8. Two. So the answer is negative 2. Yeah. That's the answer on the graph right at that spot. And negative 8 over, because this is always the x number, this is, they're looking for the y answer on the graph. Okay, maybe they're asking, what is the answer at f of negative 1? Negative 1, duh, 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 duh. So negative 1 over? Six or 5. Yeah, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah, you're going right. to be 5 there. Because I found negative 1 on the x-axis, I go straight up and tell me the answer on the graph. It's, it's 5. Okay, if they ask for this, find f of x, that would give me negative 2. Oh. 
Now that's a different problem. That's the one that most people mess it's up on. It's negative eight. There, or there's, positive there you go. Something. You're looking eight. at what values that's would spit eight. out the y number of negative two. There's two x numbers that would that's potentially do this. It would be negative eight or one, two, three, four, five, six. So negative eight or six can potentially do that. That would spit out a negative two out of that thing. Does that make sense? If there's more than one, you have to list them all. That's what you're doing. Now, the last couple just have for the main range. Look at the graph. The big thing is on that last one, the last problem, if they ask for domain range, you have to get your answer in interval notation. That's the part that we discussed yesterday in the last two minutes of class. Do you know how to do interval notation? No. Well, let's talk about that right now, so in case we're gone. Okay? So, what do you know? so correct terminology. <laughs> parenthesis versus parenthesis. Yes. Okay. All right, so let's talk about domain. Let's talk about domain and how to put it in the correct notation. Domain is all the x values. So if this graph doesn't have any arrows, that's fine. We're going to start here, work our way to the top x number. It's going left to right, whatever the x numbers are. So the x number would be negative 8 all the way up to, what is that, 9? That's where it ends. Now, at the very end, we have to put brackets around this. Now let's talk about why. This is called interval notation. It's going from negative 8 up to 9. Now, that is not a coordinate. It's using brackets. Um, yeah, closed circles use brackets. These are closed circles. They use brackets. If one of these happens to be an open circle, then you use a parenthesis. <laughs> <laughs> we actually search it. We figured it out yeah, yeah, This is a singular. It one still makes me cringe. <laughs> All right. We good with that. God, I can't believe you made me say that. All right, let's move on. Range. Let's go to the range. Range are the y numbers. So this is the y value. <laughs> Okay, so for the y values, that's starting here and moving up to this spot. Now, you have to look for closed brackets, closed dots, that type of thing. Well, we do have a closed circle here, and let's assume this one is still closed. Because that was my original problem, had it closed. So I'll go back up here and put a bracket there. All right, so we're starting here, so I'm giving me the y numbers. This is negative 2 up to the number 5. That was your highest point. It was 5 up. So negative 2 up to 5 in height. So that would be my bracket. Negative 2 up to 5. And yes, these brackets, they have closed circles. If there was an arrow, maybe there was an arrow going this way. Now all my answers change. Because now, since there's an arrow, I don't actually have a smallest x number. It just happens to go this direction forever. So you would actually use a parenthesis and a negative infinity. Because for the domain, we're going to negative infinity this direction. That's the direction we're heading, negative infinity. That we don't use a bracket because we don't lose. So in both parentheses, how do you know if we use that? You know, this number the domain or what is For these, they're asking for the interval. I, that's the weird thing. You just have to understand. Like When they ask for an interval, you have to give me a word. It could be in parentheses. It could be brackets. You're just going to have to trust it. So you got to read what the question is asking. Okay, now, for the range, so we have the domain, negative infinity up to the number 9. The range, negative infinity, that's my lowest number. And since it's negative infinity, I have to use a parenthesis. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. Are we good? Okay, let's move on. Oh, you know. Explain it to me. Why, why is it more important than just a word and a math term? You don't know? Yeah, it's just a word. Find it so funny. It almost makes me laugh. All right, let's move on. All right, today, what we're going to be talking about is increasing versus decreasing. Hopefully, that explained all your own, by the way. Increasing versus decreasing versus constant. Intervals, and uh, we're going to talk about the differential quotient last. I only have a couple examples of each. We'll spend the most time today on differential quotients, and I'll try to give you the last 10 to 15 minutes today to work. I don't think you need more than that. Uh, the homework is pretty straightforward. 
Okay, all right, so let's talk about the first part. Let's do, let's do intervals here. Okay, so let's say that this is my, this is my graph. It's, it looks like a Z. It's got arrows on both sides, kind of going different, different directions. What the question will ask in the book is they'll ask, name the intervals for this thing is increasing, decreasing, and staying constant. Okay, so imagine that my lines are very straight here and here. Sorry, I can't draw that, but straight. And then this one's going that direction. So, how do you do this? Increasing, decreasing, and staying constant. You have to give me the intervals where it's doing this. Okay, so constant. Okay, so how this works, how this works. Is this graph, as I go and remember how this works, we're going left to right. Left to right. So that's so I'm looking at this graph. As I go left to right, at any point, is this graph going up this direction? No. So there is no increasing. This is not applicable. Not, not applicable, right? There's no point of this graph, it's ever increasing. The graph is never going up to the right. Okay, now decreasing. There was a particular spot where it did go down. It, from, if I went left to right, it was going down this direction. It was from here to here. That's the, that's the, that's the, the actual domain numbers where it's decreasing. It's getting lower. So what you have to do is you have to give me the answers in parentheses. Where, um, and why it's parentheses? Because um, we're actually sharing these numbers. So this is my x number. What is this? Negative 7? Um, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Yeah, that's 7. And this is 0 for the x numbers. So I'm going from negative 7 to 0. It's decreasing. And notice I use parentheses. Uh, because um, those numbers, these numbers, are actually going to be shared with the next interval. They're actually being shared with a constant. So I'm not allowed to include them in, you know, decreasing versus uh, versus constant. Now for constants, the graph levels off. We're neither going up or down. We leveled off on you know consistent payments or consistent money. We're not making profits or losses, that type of thing. We're just staying constant. Well, there's two. There's this this domain, and then there's this domain where the the actual graph is staying constant. I'm using x numbers. So it went from, as I go left to right, it went from negative infinity up to negative 7. So negative infinity in this direction, up to negative 7, that's where it stops. So negative infinity up to negative 7. Then we're going to do a union of the other one. So we have to, a union means to add. We're going to add the other grouping. It started at 0 and went to positive infinity. 0 to positive infinity. And yes, you actually have to give me the positive in front of the infinity. You're actually telling me it's going to positive infinity. So that's where it's constant. It leveled off in these areas. Does that make sense? Notice I'm not using y numbers. I'm just using the x's. Does that make sense? Yes. That's domain. It's, it's the intervals where we're increasing, decreasing. What you're actually looking at here, this is called interval notation. In fact, I'm using a union, which we had on that one previous test we just took. So you've got to know what a union is. It's adding things together. Okay, here's my question. Do we need to do another one? Yes. Yes? Another one. Okay. Do one more. Okay, I'll try to do one where it has some increases. Right? Yes. <laughs> you should take a picture of <laughs> it's a catch 22. You can't do it. I'm assume that the phone is nice. Oh, all right. Okay, hey, let's go to the next one. So, another example increasing, decreasing, constant. Okay, um, let's start here. We'll go up. We'll go down. We'll go up. And that's where we'll stop. Okay? All right, so this is my graph. This is my function of some sort. It is a function. It has the vertical line. Okay, on this one, we have a couple spots where it is increasing. We have a spot where it is decreasing. There's no constant. It never leveled off anywhere. It never just went flat, flat. Um, so when we're increase, decrease, we can actually put these. Increasing, decreasing, but there's no constant. The constant is an NA, not applicable. 
domain. It is never leveled off flat. Okay, the intervals where we're increasing as I go left to right will be here to here and here. Uh, roughly, if that is that if that's Boeing upwards, we'll say there to there. Okay, well, let's assume that it's getting actually higher as we go this turn. We'll shave off a little bit. We're actually going up. <laughs> we'll just say that. Let's we'll say that that was the lowest point. Sorry. Pretty sure it went down. So. Make uh, open dot. Yeah. There you go. Open dot. Now open dot. All right. Okay. All right. So let's say that that's my graph. All right. So increasing. It's from left to right, here to here, it's going up, then it went down, and then it went up from here to here. So that's my so my interval for increasing is this spot here, which is negative one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's negative six up to negative four. Now here's the weird thing. We can't share the negative, we're gonna have to share the negative four between the decreasing and increasing. So the negative four is gonna have to be with a, a parenthesis here. Um, the, uh, the negative six, since there's no arrow, I can actually put a bracket there for negative six. So negative six up to negative four, it was actually increasing. I'm sharing this between the decreasing and increasing, so I'm not allowed to put a bracket there. Even though I know it's a closed circle, it's being shared between the two different sets, so I'm not allowed to use it. Now the next part, this is negative one up to two. And that's a bracket, because it ended at two. There's, it wasn't sharing it with anything else. It didn't have an arrow. So I'm, using, I'm allowed to use a bracket. If that was an open circle, yeah, you'd have to put them in the there. So, all right, decreasing. Well, decreasing, negative four up to negative one. That's where it was decreasing. And I know that those numbers were being shared with the increase, so I have to use parentheses around them. There's two of them. Okay, okay, we're good with the interval notation, how that works. Hopefully that makes sense to you. For some reason, this was just a hot mess for people last year. Like when they got to the test, there I could tell what problems were going to cause problems. It was differential questions, which is the, the kind of more challenging material. And then this part, just getting annoying if you had to use a bracket versus a parentheses. Okay, we good? Yes. All right. One more example. Just want me to write it. Yeah, I know. All right, no. All right, let's move on. Let's let's look at the last thing here today. This is my last note. I want to look at a differential quotient. Okay, a differential quotient is when they they give you a function. So I'm gonna I'm gonna write down a function here. I'm gonna write down something very very simple. Let's use this one. This is my this is my function. Very simple. That is a linear function, by the way. Uh, 3x plus 5 is linear. It doesn't have any powers on it, so it's definitely a straight line. All right. Um, what they want you to define is it's called a differential quotient. So let me write that term down here. We're going to find the differential quotient. Differential quotient for this function. Okay, now what that means, you are basically finding what they call the rate of change of this function. In fact, it's more it's more important than that, other than just a rate of change. It is the instantaneous rate of change. Oh, oh man. It's like instantaneous rate of change. Which, if, if you're in calculus, the instantaneous rate of change is called a derivative. I've heard about derivatives. It is a derivative. It is the number one thing that you learn in Calc 1. It's what they teach for an entire semester, how to find differential quotients over different functions. Wait, how is it so hard if you're going to teach us today? Okay, because I'm going to show you the very basic. This is the one rule that applies to all of them. Okay? It's a very generic rule. What they teach over the whole semester in Calc 1 is they teach very specific like shortcuts you can do. Okay? Because I'll, I'll tell you shortcuts. In fact, I'm going to write down the answer before we start. Just so you know that there is a shortcut for the problem. Okay. Yep, hold on to it, don't look at it. Okay. All right, so instantaneous rate of change for this problem. So how you do this, this is, this is the formula that you need to write down. F of x plus h 
minus f of x, all divided by h. That is the formula you need to write down. Stop nodding your head. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I can't spell. Don't take a picture of that. I can't spell. It's already on video. Ow! Ow! I can't spell. <laughs> Yeah, it's definitely weird. Did you just stop it? No, I started that. Alright. It was almost like that, so I had to restart it. So, okay, so, does everyone have their, does everyone have the, uh, the formula written down? Okay, alright. We're gonna, we're gonna take this function that I'm giving you, I call this a linear function. I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna plug it in here, and we're gonna slightly modify it. So it's kind of doing functional substitution, the stuff we did a little while back. <laughs> okay. Right. okay, so we're going to take my function, modify it, and we're going to plug it in there. So what I mean by that is I know there's an h on the bottom, and I know that I'm going to have to subtract the original function, the f of x. Well, what was my original function? 3 plus 5. Okay, so that's going to go back here. And you can put them in brackets, you can put them in parentheses, whatever you want to do. It's got to be in the back. You're subtracting the original thing I gave you. In the front, up here, this has to be in brackets. We're going to modify the original function. This is the function, the original one, but we're going to actually add in another letter. So, an H. So, you have to take your original function and substitute this into it. That's the hard part that most people can't figure out. If you have multiple X's, they have to all have an, a plus h in them with them. So what I mean by that is right here, there is an x on this problem. So I'm going to take off the x and put an x plus h where it sits. Notice, I put that in parentheses. That the x plus h has to be in the spot where the x was sitting. If there's multiple x's, then you have the x plus h on all of them. You're not just putting it in the back, it's, it's in there, and it's being substituted in like you did in your homework today. The, actually, the, the, what is that, the 28, 29. Here. Okay. Alright, let's do the math here. So, we're going to distribute the 3. 3x plus 3h. So, 3x plus 3h plus 5. And then, you are going to distribute the negative sign in the back. Minus 3x. Subtract 3x, subtract 5. Over h. All over h. And if you did this right, here's how you know you did it right. Everything that does not have an h should drop out. So I'm just doing normal math. Distribute, distribute oh negative signs. God. Everything that does not have an H should magically drop out. It doesn't mean you did it wrong. You did it wrong. So anything that doesn't have an H should go away. And so now what I'm left with is this. I'm left with a 3H over H, which does simplify to be 3. Okay, the goal is very clean. Yeah. 3. Okay. So, three. The reason why, the reason why, is when you look at this original problem, this is my original linear problem, that, that's a line, right? Well, what is the rate of change called in algebra one? Slope. Slope. What's the slope of this? Three. Mx plus b. That is your slope. Well, that is what a rate of change is. So, if I knew my slope was 3, I could have jumped to the J's and knew what my final answer was. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, Ward, if we already know what slope is, why did we have to go through that whole stupid formula to tell me what slope is? Because, by the way, that formula that we just did was the original slope formula that you learned in algebra 1 days. Um, it, if you don't believe me, it's actually doing a change in X's on the top, or change of y's on the top, these are y's by the way, this is y1, y2, you're subtracting, and the bottom, we're subtracting the differences between the x's, these are the x's we're plugging in, but when you subtract, you get rid of the parentheses, and the x's would drop out, so you're left with the h, that's actually what we're doing here, you're subtracting x's on the bottom, subtracting y's on the top, and that looks like the formula that they teach you in algebra 1. Okay, it's how you find slope. It's the, it's the average rate of change. Why this thing is so important, this can help you find slope on curves. Something that's not straight linear, that doesn't have the same slope the entire problem, you know, it's three. What three means, it's rising three, running one every single time. It's the same slope the whole entire problem. 
But on curves, slope changes. Because if you look at a curve, like whatever this function is, slope is changing constantly. You know, at some point it levels off and then it starts going negative. And so you have multiple, multiple cross hatches of the slope and it changes. Well, what this thing does for you, this differential quotient, it can give you slope at any particular spot on that curve you want. It's actually what a civil engineer would do to find slope on a curve, like on a road, to know what the speed of the road should be at that exact moment. That's why the civil engineers say roughly this curve is rated for 30 miles an hour. They're doing this. They know where the curve started and ended. They know the actual math behind it, and they're doing the differential quotient to figure out what the speed should be for an average weight car at average speeds. It's, there's a ton of like math involved. It's a ton of calculus. Okay, everyone understand the basics of what we're going to be doing tomorrow. That's the intro. I want to teach you that in five minutes, which I did successfully. Thank you. Okay, now if you remember or not, we're going to talk about tomorrow. Okay, you have the rest of the time today to work on the homework. When is that assignment due? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. No. I need to get that one thing to make the, uh, the new Twitter page and I'll put the Twitter on my board. So that people can follow it because I'll post all the other things. I can drop my GoPro because I have one. I can drop it in the tank. In front of everybody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah.